The Marion County Coroner's Office says 31-year-old Kevin Pope Jr. died in the shooting around 1.30 this morning at the Bayview Club Apartments. Police say the person in sun of the apartment shot Pogue and we are told that that person is cooperating with police and is not being investigated criminally. WRTV's Caitlin Kendall spent the day with a self-defense lawyer. Yeah, Caitlin, what did you find out in terms of Indiana law? What rights do homeowners actually have in this in this case? Nicole and Megan, it's actually pretty simple. Indiana law gives special protection to people inside their home. Indiana has its own version of the castle doctrine. Essentially, it's your right to defend your home. You have a right to use reasonable force, even deadly, on anyone who's trying to break into your home. Reasonable, all depending on the circumstances. Indiana law doesn't make you prove that you were scared for your life or anyone else's inside the home. What you have to do is prove that you are trying to prevent someone from coming in. So somebody's kicking on my door in the middle of the night. Um, the hinges look like they're about to go. The lock's going to give. Do I have that reasonable belief they're breaking in illegally? Sure. And if it happens to be a mistake on their part, the law forgives that uh, because I have the reasonable belief under the circumstances. Now, if you are not in your home, does the self appliance law still apply? Well, it does to an extent. There are some important differences on your rights if you aren't inside your home. Let's break them down for you. Typically, if you're in a public place, you have to prove that you're trying to prevent someone or yourself from being seriously hurt or killed. For example, if you're being robbed at gunpoint, you have a right to protect yourself, even if that means using deadly force. You do have to prove that the person was being forceful, like if someone had a gun to your head or you were being beaten. It's important to note that it does also depend on your circumstances, who's attacking you, what you're physically capable of when it comes to defending yourself. Not all felonies are forcible. If a guy's out stealing my car right now, that's a felony. It's not a forcible felony because he's not carjacking me. He's just stealing my car. So I can't run out and shoot him, right? So it has to be a fort, like armed robbery is certainly a, 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 a forcible felony. Uh, rape is certainly a forcible felony uh, and can be resisted with deadly force. And I'm glad we have that rule as well. So, Caitlin, here's a question for you. How common are self-defense cases in the city of Indianapolis? It's interesting, Megan, that you asked that because Indianapolis numbers have drastically increased this year. IMPD breaks homicides into two categories, criminal and non-criminal. Non-criminal meaning self-defense or accidental. Indianapolis's non-criminal homicide numbers are up 900% compared to this time last year. This year, IMPD reports that there have been 10 non-criminal killings. Last year, in the same time frame, there was just one. Now, attorney Guy Relford does say that there are things you can do to try and protect yourself. He says the biggest thing is to just be aware of what's going on around you. And on the state's website, there is a document called the Gun Owners Bill of Rights that talks about the responsibility that gun owners have here in Indiana. We have a link to that document in this story at WRTV.com.